previously. Oh god, I just remembered about Heimdall. <laughs> My baby. God, is Pepper Potts still alive? What about Aunt May? Who is- oh god. Well, it's gonna be a year until the next Infinity War movie. Is it going to be called Infinity War? Is it part two? Is it something else? I don't know. Okay. I have- I have a six-year-old. I, I have a six-year-old kid and she really loves Avengers. She really loves Marvel. She spent three days with a handmade vision um, Mind Stone on her, taped to her head that she made herself and would not let us take off that kind of, that kind of kid. When it came to around Infinity War, I had to put my mom foot down and I was like, this is a little too intense for six. You can watch Ant-Man, you know? You can watch Thor Ragnarok, but this... There's gonna be a lot of death, there's gonna be a lot of sad, it's gonna be a very emotionally wrought movie for a six-year-old, for a sensitive six. So, I, I tried to go with my best judgment there and did not allow her to see Infinity War in theater. However, there is another reason that you don't bring kids to movies like this when they're that young. And it's because, sir or madam, as a parent, you know your kid can't shut up. Your kid can't really follow what's going on very well. They can't stop moving around. They have no con like sense of how loud they're being. And they can't shut up. While I greatly enjoyed this movie for many reasons that I am going to put out for you in this whatever this is, review, recap, whatever. Um, my experience is slightly colored by the fact that I sat next to two kids whose parents were just checked out. They just talked through the whole fucking movie and it, whoo, there is nothing in this world quite like paying $35 for IMAX tickets to see one of the biggest movies of the last probably 20 years and to be sat next to a seven-year-old kid who can't stop asking, who is that? Oh, it's Gamora. Is that Gamora? No, she's dead. Is he gonna die? Is he dead? What is that? What's happening? Don't take your kid to see it. Just don't take them to see it. Get it on DVD, stream it. It's okay, you can make them wait, all right? This movie was really good. I did not cry throughout the entire movie, but I did also take a Xanax in preparation for seeing it, so that maybe colored my experience a little bit too. But it was, I could, I could sort of intellectually tell like, wow, this is really emotionally satisfying for so many reasons. Like this movie defies genre in so many ways. Like it's action adventure, clearly it's a superhero movie, but it was also like science fiction. It was also time travel hijinks. It was also like detective stuff. Like at some, a certain point in the movie, there's like detective music, classic like sneaking around music. And it was so refreshing and interesting and weird. I really love that the characters just get put through the fucking ringer. Like I love that they are not afraid to really push these characters. At the beginning of the movie, like Iron Man is emaciated. He's, he's like nearly, he's half starved to death and you can see it in his, in his face and his body. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. They just nearly starved Iron Man to death. These people are not infallible. They're, it's just incredible, right? Can we talk about Fat Thor? Like I was not expecting that. I was not expecting Fat Thor. And I'm sure there are probably some people who are like, oh, it's not, it's not funny because it's good. But I, I took it as like, he had been drinking a lot. He's not like overeating, he's over drinking and over drinking can give you a beer gut. And that's why it was funny. The whole like loss of his sense of identity and his like weakness because he's Thor, you know, he's this superhero who's so like overpowered and, and, and that's like, from a film standpoint, I think that that was, was, was really cool about it, is that we got to a point where these characters were, were so strong. There's like gods involved and there's like all of these things. And they managed to still make a movie that felt like they were really in danger. You know, like that they were really lost something and they could really lose it all. Like that is good writing. On the other hand, this movie is extraordinarily long. Like I am not a doctor and you shouldn't take my medical advice for anything in the world. However, there is a 
<laughs> over-the-counter medication that you can get from the drugstore called Azo, which is actually for urinary tract infections, but it, what it'll do is it'll numb your bladder. That's what it does. And I am not telling you that that's what you should do in preparation for movies like that. I'm just telling you that that's what I did. And uh, I didn't have to pee through the whole movie, so food for thought. I know people who work with me who went to see Endgame without seeing any of the other movies. And I don't know what universe they live in. Like, I can understand people who don't watch superhero movies. I can understand people who like... But, like, they came back and they're like, I didn't like it. It didn't make any sense. Of course it didn't make... Of course... <laughs> As a standalone film, this movie is incomprehensible fucking gibberish. It does not make sense. It is the culmination of, like, what, 20 years of movies? It, that's what it is. Uh, this is not for you. I mean, you can see it, but you're not going to be satisfied. It's not satisfying to you. It's satisfying to me because I am such an Avengers nerd. I'm such a Marvel just hack. It's horrible. I'm, I watch these movies like every weekend while I'm doing other things. They're just playing in the background. I have no shame about that. And so in that way, this movie was was really, it just felt good. Um, there was time travel. <laughs> I love time travel hijinks in movies almost like all the time. I love time travel hijinks because it's so stupid. It's so like ridiculous, right? They did not hold back with Endgame at all. They, it, they were just like, yeah, we're just gonna make a balls to the wall, bullshit, goddamn ridiculous superhero movie and it doesn't matter. Fuck you. Fuck you if you don't like it. Where did Valkyrie get a Pegasus? Right? Because like Asgard, Ragnarok blew up Asgard. There's no uh, actual winged horses anywhere. The answer is shut up because fucking winged horses are cool. I love Tom Holland as Spider-Man so much. I've never actually been as invested in Spider-Man like as a character as I have until Tom Holland played him in Spider-Man Homecoming. And now I'm so fucking pumped for home for like Far From Home. I'm so into it in such a just pathetic way that I'm just like, yeah, take my money. Just take all of it because I, I want this franchise. Just put it in my face. I was a little concerned before this movie came out because Captain Marvel had just come out and there was a sort of hinting at the end of Captain Marvel that it might be like, oh, she's, you know, gonna save the day for, for Endgame. And I was worried about that because I really, I didn't like Captain Marvel very much at all. I just didn't. I didn't think it was well written. I didn't think it was very well edited. Um, and and I just, hey, I thought she deserved a better, a better picture. But, so I was concerned. It's like, oh no, is she gonna be like front and center in Endgame after, you know, all of these movies? Like, just like, here, surprise, it's the Captain Marvel movie. No, they didn't do that. They, they really pulled back with that and I really appreciated that. I didn't want that at all. Captain America was worthy of Mjolnir. Like that, that just like makes my day. I was so, I have such a, I'm such a bitch for Captain America. I so, oh, I just love him. I love, I, I, if you had told me before this franchise of like Captain America is an awesome character, I would have laughed in your face like as a, like a douchey alternative kid who thought myself very anti-government. I love Captain America. That is America's ass. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get over how, the, how funny that was, um, how much, how ridiculous and funny parts of this movie were and how like deeply emotional other parts of it were. This, these movies are good, man. Honestly, there's just so much that happened like jammed into my head. I can't really process it. I. I barely remember the, this experience of this movie because so much happened. I have, this is like a repeat viewing. I have to go like get it on DVD and watch it with the rest of the movies I watch on the weekend. Continue to, to process it because there's just, it's like a, it's like a dictionary, only a movie. It's crazy. It was good. I really liked it. Um, I would love to see it again without two fucking seven-year-olds sitting next to me asking questions because they can't follow the movie because they're too young because you shouldn't take your kids to see that kind of movie get a fucking babysitter. Ah, uh, that's me. Um, I had a really good time. I, it's, it's late. Okay, cool. Yeah.
way less traumatized this time less traumatized they set up so many cool like offshoot movies and like tv shows and i'm gonna watch all of them because i'm such a slut for marvel uh, uh yeah let me know what you think of endgame and uh, in the comments below and subscribe and do all that other stuff I'm, i have to go to bed i have to go to bed i will talk to you all later bye <laughs>